英語聞き流し10分間、名作リスニング。英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロードその他の物語はホームページよりご利用いただけます 88thpp.com 88thpp.com My parents married by an arranged marriage. Marriage used to be a knot between two families, not individuals in Japan. A mutual acquaintance introduced my parents to both families with their photographs. Although my parents didn't like each other, the tie as the family seemed favorable to their parents. My mother agreed with the marriage very unwillingly after the fortune teller said that she would handle money by a million if she married my father. As for my father, he reluctantly obeyed his parents' decision because he had never said no to his father in his life. A month after the wedding, my mother decided to leave my father because she couldn't stand to live with his parents any longer. She went back to her parents' home, but her father didn't allow her to come back. She had no place to go and gave in to her dismal marriage. And I was born. I wasn't the result of a happy marriage, but I embodied my mother's resignation. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. For some reason, I like a wristwatch so much. I have a collection of inexpensive wristwatches. So far, I've got 25 of them, almost all of which cost under $15. As a cheap collector, the biggest drawback is a battery. Having the battery replaced at a clock shop costs about $10, which is sometimes more than the price of my wristwatch itself. To solve this problem, I started changing the battery by myself several years ago by getting some basic tools for that. A battery for a watch is available on the internet only at around 40 cents, and replacing it by myself makes a big difference. While I've replaced a watch battery regularly, I found it really enjoyable. It seems I also like tinkering about with a watch. There are various tools for a watch on the internet, such as ones to open and close a lid, ones to change a watch band, ones to adjust the length of a metal band, and so on, and everything attracts me. Since my songs don't sell, I even thought of early retirement and visualized myself opening my own clock shop. How nice it would be tinkering with watches all day, surrounded by many new watches. Better yet, how about a clock shop with a cafe in it? Customers would have coffee looking at a line of watches of my pick. But the watches would keep reminding the customer what time it is, and the restless ticking of their second hands would make them rush. Besides, I'm a dropper and I would drop the watch to the floor all the time. New watches would be broken and the customer's one would be compensated. In addition, I have a germ phobia and couldn't stand touching someone's belongings, which would make it impossible to replace a battery in a customer's watch. Above all, people usually retire from a shopkeeper and then start music. My course would be the reverse of a common situation. Incidentally, I'm a little astigmatic and no good with tiny parts. I'd better restrict myself to a battery change of my own wristwatches. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Before I began to replace a wristwatch battery by myself, I used to visit a small mom and pop clock shop. It was diffidently situated in a nook of a supermarket. Although the supermarket had fairly many shoppers around, they just walked past the clock shop and seldom got in. The shop looked near deserted, and I often saw an old couple who kept the shop nodding off over the counter. The old man was a typical bull headed craftsman. He never pitched or chatted friendly to the customer, but worked on a watch intensely and precisely. All his tools looked as old as he himself was, having used for who knew how many years. 
Every watch of mine I brought there was a cheap one, and yet he treated them as if they were high-end watches. One of my wristwatches has a peculiar shaped lid and when I brought it in for a battery change, he closed the lid with his own hands by taking 10 minutes since his tool was too old to deal with the shape. When I brought in an apparently broken wristwatch, he poured a mysterious liquid inside the watch and dried it with the ceiling light by standing on the chair to reach up the light for 10 minutes. The watch started ticking again magically and has been in top shape since then. I had never left the counter during his work because I liked to look at it so much. Everything he was doing to a watch attracted me immensely. I would even gaze at a simple battery change with fascination. He would use a wearable loop, clean the lid with a tiny brush, open it, take out an old battery with tweezers, bring a new one from behind the curtain, engrave the date on the battery so that he could evaluate its duration on the next change, put it in, close the lid with his old tool and set the time with his wristwatch. Sometimes he found a tattered water repellent rubber ring inside my watch but he never pressed me into buying a new one. He just picked up torn pieces with his tweezers and put them back in as they had been. His most strict instruction to keep watches was to separate them from appliances at least 10 feet. It's difficult in my small apartment but I still keep my watches as far from appliances as possible. He also told me repeatedly not to place a watch close to a cell phone. I've changed my wrist to wear a watch to my right as I use a cell phone with my left hand. Eventually I moved too far away from the shop and couldn't visit anymore. And I started replacing a battery by myself. I mimic his battery change with much more primitive tools. Probably I like to see his work because of his passion and earnestness for a watch. I wonder how he's doing and miss him. Audiobook Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. I don't have a child and probably won't have one all my life. But in my dreams, I've cuddled my baby for several times. It's a boy and always the same baby, and I firmly believe I have a child in a different dimension. One day, in my dream, or in that dimension, I saw him in his 20s. It was the future. He lived in a secluded village and was devoted to an unfamiliar future sport. He didn't notice me as I was watching him from somewhere far. I was so happy to see my baby have grown up and see him not working at an office as a businessman. An elderly man passed by me and I asked him about the sport my son was practicing intently. My question was if the sport was some kind of official, recognized, or popular, which was somehow a possible way to make money. He told me that this sport was completely unknown to the public and there was no event or competition, thus it never brought money whatsoever, not a cent. I burst into tears for joy. Not only he didn't become an office worker for a steady income, but also he chose the profession that was totally unrelated to money or fame. He wasn't interested in them. His only interest was the sport. I couldn't stop crying for joy, thinking how ideally he had grown up and what a perfect son he was to me. I felt thoroughly proud of him and grateful for him to become as he was. Since I saw that dream, I felt more confident of myself because I've raised an honorable child in the other dimension. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook,Japanese.com,名作リスニング,英語テキストと MP3ダウンロード,その他のものがたりはホームページよりご利用いただけます。88thpp.com 88thpp.com